Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger for Rocketstock.com. Today I want to show you how to simulate a camera passing through a glass window using After Effects. Let's take a look at the effect. I've seen this effect used quite a bit in movies and music videos, and it's a nice stylistic effect if you're trying to give the impression of a one take or a seamless shot. Obviously our effect is composed of two shots, but I'll show you how to set that up. Before we get started though, I do want to mention that the After Effects project file and the example footage that I'm using today will be available to download on the Rocketstock blog. We're also going to be using some free light leaks that are available on the Rocketstock freebie page. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so now we're inside of After Effects and I went ahead and imported the two example clips that I'm going to be using today. Let me go ahead and click on the first one so we can kind of see what this looks like. So what I've got here is just a shot inside of a house and I'm walking toward the window that I want to pass through and essentially I'm just ending the shot right as I get right close to the window there. So for the second clip, I'll go ahead and show you that. What I did was I went outside and really positioned the camera as close to where that position was when it was on the inside of the window as possible and you can see I just kind of simulated that it was just passing through and continued that movement on. These two shots don't have to match up perfectly because the transition will be obscured by kind of a flare and a blurring effect of the window, but as close as you can get them will only help sell the effect even more. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab the first clip and add it to a new composition. And I'm going to go ahead and drag in the second clip as well, place it underneath the first clip. And now I'm just going to right click and select composition settings. And I want to rename this footage. And for the duration down here, I want to change that to 8 seconds just so we have enough length for both of the clips, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I'm going to just pull this out so we can see everything. And what I'm going to do with the second clip down here, I'm just going to align it with the very end of the first clip. And if I kind of scroll over this, we can see it goes from one clip to the other. And you can see they don't line up again perfectly like I said. There's a couple things we can do though to try to make the first clip line up a little bit closer with the second clip. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in here by pushing the plus key at the top of the keyboard. And what I'm going to do actually here is I'm going to select the first clip on top there and move it over just so it overlaps one frame of the second clip. And this is going to help us with our alignment. So I'm going to hit T on the keyboard with that first clip selected for opacity. I'm going to lower that to 70%. So now we can kind of see a ghosting effect of the first clip over the second clip. So now what you do is go ahead and create keyframes for the scale and the position. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard with the first clip selected and I'm going to hold shift and hit P and that'll bring up the position and the scale down here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a keyframe for the position and the scale. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift and page up on the keyboard. And that's gonna move my current time indicator back 10 frames. And when we're right there, I'm gonna go ahead and create two more keyframes. And so now we've went ahead and created keyframes. What we can do is I'm just gonna go back to these first frames we created. And now we can go ahead and adjust the scale and the position. So I'm gonna bring the scale up to about 135. And we can see what I'm going to try to do is match up these two beams. The trees won't really align, but as close as I can get at least these beams to align, that'll help sell the effect a little bit more. I'm also just going to click on the clip and drag to kind of reposition the clip so that those two columns here align as well. You can see right here at the bottom corner is kind of what I'm looking at just to get those close. So once we have that lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and select both of these first keyframes we created for the position and the scale. I'm going to right click. And you're going to see keyframe assistance. I'm going to convert those to easy ease. Now just kind of help smooth that out when it transitions into those keyframes. And now down here at the end, we're going to go ahead and select both of those keyframes and move them to the very end. And now we can go ahead and select our first clip and just move it forward one more frame. So it now goes from that to the second clip. And we need to finally just adjust the opacity back to normal. So I'm going to go ahead and hit T on the keyboard with that clip selected and bring this back up to 100%. So now I'm just going to zoom this out and kind of preview this again so we can kind of see what's happening. So we're essentially just scaling up that clip now to match a little bit closer. I'll just do a quick ramp preview of that and we can kind of see that scaling effect happening. And if you notice that there is a little bit of scaling if it's visible, what you can do is select your clip here and I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard to toggle the switches if you don't see this. But this is motion blur. I'm going to go ahead and check that on and we can check that on for the preview here. So now when I go ahead and preview that, that'll help kind of hide that scaling a little bit better. All right, so now that we have the two shots kind of synced up, what we need to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to select that footage comp that we created, I'm going to add that to a new composition, and I'm going to right-click and go to Composition Settings, and we're going to rename this Glass Effect. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And this is gonna be the main comp that we're working in now. And the first effect I wanna add onto my footage now is the chromatic abrasion that occurs when we pass through the window. In order for us to do that, we're gonna to need to separate the footage into three different channels for RGB, which would be red, green, and blue. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna select my footage down here and come to effect. And then under channel, I wanna select the effect shift channels. And for this first one, I wanna go ahead and select take red from full off. From the second one, take green from full off and take blue from blue. So what we can do now, I'm gonna go down here and select this clip, I'm gonna hit enter and rename this blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it, I'm gonna hit control D on the keyboard, command D on a Mac to duplicate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit command D to duplicate that one more time so we have three different copies. And on this middle copy here, I'm gonna select that, hit enter and rename that green. And on that clip, I'm gonna select it, come here to the effects, because it duplicated that effect when we duplicated everything. I'm gonna set blue to be full off now and to take green from green. And now on this top copy, you wanna go ahead and hit enter on that, rename it red. And with that selected on the effect, I wanna go ahead and set red to take red from red and take blue from full off and green to full off. So now what we have essentially is red, green, and blue. In order for us to see this a little bit better, I'm gonna select the first one red and just recolor it red over here for the tag. And on green, I'll change that to green. And for blue, I'll change that to blue. And now for us to see our clip correctly, we need to select the first clip red here. I'm gonna hit F4 again to toggle those switches there. If you don't see this, I'm gonna set the mode to be screen. And for the green, I'm gonna set that to screen as well. So now our clips will look exactly the way they did when we first imported them in. But the good thing about this is now we can apply various effects to each of these channels to simulate that chromatic abrasion. And the first chromatic abrasion effect we wanna apply is to the green channel. So I'm just gonna move down here to right when the clips split. So right about there. And what I want to do is apply the effect optics compensation. So I'm just coming to effect and under distort, we're going to see optics compensation. And I'm going to go ahead and select reverse lens distortion right there. Make sure that's checked. And I'm going to go ahead and create a keyframe for the field of view. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to be 44. And when I type that in, you can see kind of this chromatic abrasion effect starting to take place. And I'm going to go ahead and hit U on the keyboard with the green clip selected so we can see those keyframes. And now I'm just gonna hold shift and hit page up to move up 10 frames from that and set the field of view back down to zero. And now I'm just gonna move that current time indicator back over that first frame we created. I'm gonna hit shift and hit page down twice to move down 20 frames. And now I'm gonna hit another keyframe there to make that zero again. So essentially what we have is the optics compensation going from zero to 44 and then back down to zero. So what we can do to smooth those out again, we're just gonna highlight all those keyframes and just right click and go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease for that. So now we need to do the same effect to the red channel. So I'm gonna select the red channel and I'm just gonna set the current time indicator right there again where the two clips change. And we're gonna apply the effect again to optics compensation. So effect, distort, and optics compensation. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and select reverse lens distortion. And for the field of view, I'm gonna create a keyframe and set this to be 60. So now we can see all three different channels there. And on the red channel, I'm just gonna hit U again so we can see that keyframe. And I still have the keyframes visible from the green channel. So I'm just gonna move up to right when that's aligned with that first green channel keyframe, which again is 10 frames backwards. And I'm gonna set that value now to be at zero. And now I'm gonna come down here to the very end, which is 20 frames down and set the value again back down to zero. Finally, I wanna highlight all the red channel keyframes there and right click and go to keyframe assistant easy ease for those as well. So now if I just go ahead and kind of scroll over this, we can see the chromatic abrasion occurring and then blending in with the second shot. Now what I want to do on the second shot, when it appears, if you notice, it's a little bit darker, more contrasty than the shot through the window. You can see this is very washed out and I want to kind of make that a little more gradual as it passes through. So it kind of simulates that it's actually passing through the glass. So in order to do that, I'm just going to right click here and create a new adjustment layer and I'm just gonna select that adjustment layer, hit enter, and I'm gonna rename that color match. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that adjustment layer down so that it starts right at the middle there where the clips split. And I wanna apply the effect Lumetri color to this adjustment layer, so I'm just gonna come here to effect, color correction, and Lumetri color. And the first thing I wanna adjust is under the basic correction, and it's gonna be the blacks level here. And I'm just gonna create a keyframe there for the blacks, and I'm gonna set this to be around 118 just so it kind of lifts those up so you can see how it kind of matches now a little bit more with the window there. 
Yeah, we want this to kind of fade out gradually. So I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard with that adjustment layer selected so we can see that keyframe now. And I'm gonna hit Shift and page down three times so we move down 30 keyframes or one second. And I'm gonna bring the blacks value back down now to somewhere around 48. Now the next settings I wanna adjust are under the Creative tab. I'm gonna go ahead and move the current time indicator back up to the beginning of that adjustment layer. And I wanna adjust the faded film and the saturation. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a keyframe for the faded film. I'm gonna set that to be 85. And the saturation, I'll curate a keyframe for that and set this to be around 120. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and select the current time indicator and move that down 30 frames back with this other keyframe. I can get U on the keyboard twice to bring up those other keyframes. And I just wanna go ahead and bring the faded film back down to zero and the saturation back down to 100. And in order for these to fade out a little gradually, I'm gonna select all those in keyframes there, right click and also select keyframe assistant, easy ease. So now if I just go ahead and ram preview this, we can see how it kind of transitions a little bit easier now from the first clip to the second. And again, the color just kind of fades back into the original shot. So now we can go ahead and simulate the distortion that occurs with the glass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and create a new adjustment layer. And I wanna go ahead and select that, hit enter and rename that glass. And on that adjustment layer, I wanna go ahead and add the effect, distort, turbulent displace. And for this, I wanna go ahead and set the current time indicator back now, right at the middle of the two clips. And the first thing I wanna do for the amount I'm gonna go ahead and set a keyframe for that to be at 130. And for the size, we don't need to create a keyframe. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to be at 150. And so this is kind of the peak level here of where the distortion will be at. So what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna hit U on the keyboard with that selected so we can see that keyframe that we created. And I wanna go ahead and move up 10 frames. So I'm gonna hold shift and hit page up so we move back 10 frames. And now we can go ahead and set the amount up here back down to zero. And now if I go ahead and slide this back over the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift and page down twice to move down 20 frames. It actually made me move down a little bit more, so I'm gonna hit this five more times here. Page down on the keyboard to move down five more frames. And I'm gonna set the amount now back to zero again. So essentially what it should look like is at zero, then it distorts, and then it gradually goes back down to zero. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and select all those keyframes again, right click and select keyframe assistant, easy ease. And to add a little more of an accent on this, I'm gonna move the current time indicator over that first keyframe we created. And under evolution up here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a keyframe for that. And now under our last keyframe here for the turbulent displace, I'm gonna go ahead and set this now to be at one. So I want this to do a complete revolution. So up here, I'm just gonna type in one. And so that adds just a little bit more of an aesthetic as it passes through the window there kind of like it's moving through the glass. Now I wanna go ahead and add a little bit of a blur onto this because this glass, you know, it's not crystal clear, but I don't wanna blur everything so much that you still can't tell what's going on. So I wanna go ahead and align my current time indicator up with this first keyframe we created for turbulent displace and come here and apply the effect, blur, camera lens blur. And we're gonna keyframe this up at the same positions that we did for the turbulent displace. So I'll move right back here to the middle I'm gonna set the blur up here to be 70. So as you can see, that's quite a bit of a blur and we really can't tell what's happening now. But if we come down here to the aspect ratio, I'm gonna set this to be 0.15. So it's really gonna make it more of a vertical blur. So like this, we can still see kind of that chromatic abrasion occurring and some of the features of the trees and other things. I'm also gonna come down here to repeat edge pixels and go ahead and check that on as well. And so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and create a keyframe for that blur radius at 70 right here at the middle. And I'm just gonna bring this back up 10 frames, again, aligning it with the keyframes of the turbulent displace. And I'm gonna set the blur radius now to be zero. And if we just move down here all the way to the very end, I'm gonna set the blur radius back down to zero as well. Again, what we wanna do is align those camera lens blur keyframes with the turbulent displace keyframes that we created. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ramp preview this now. So now you can see we get a little more of a blur onto this, kind of help blending and simulating. We're passing through that kind of hazed over glass. So finally, the last thing we can use to kind of accent this shot, I always like to use real world elements if possible. And what I think this shot could really benefit from is a light leak kind of overlaying, really bright right at the middle of the transition. So if we come here to the project, I've went ahead and imported one of the light leaks from the free Rocket Stock light leak pack that's available from the Rocket Stock freebie page. And I'm using light leak number three here, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that into my composition right at the very top. If I go ahead and move this down, we can kind of see the light leak that's occurring here. 
And this is actually a 4K light leak. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that layer selected, come up here to layer, transform, and select fit to comp. So I'll just scale that down to fit with our 1080p composition. And I just wanna position this a little bit so that it begins a little bit before the turbulent display starts to occur and really gets kind of its brightest right here at the middle split of the two clips and fades out. However, as we can see, this light leak is blue and I'm not sure that's really gonna match with our shots. What I'm actually gonna do is with that clip selected, I'm gonna come here to effect, color correction, hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna adjust the hue here to be about 173 degrees to make it orange. We're just gonna kind of match our shot a little bit better. And now for the mode, again, if you don't see this, you can hit F4 on the keyboard. And I'm gonna set this to be a screen mode. And let's go ahead and ramp preview and see what this looks like now. And now we can see, I really think this helps to blend in between the two shots. Just kind of adds that little extra element there. I really like the bokeh and the light accent that that creates for this transition. And one more kind of final tip here with this light leak, if it doesn't match the frame rate for your footage, I'm gonna just go back to the project here. You can select the light leak. And in my case, my footage is at 29.97 and this light leak is at 23.97. I'm just gonna right click on that clip and go to interpret footage main and we can adjust the frame right here of the light leak so i can just type in 29.97 and click ok and you can see in my case i'll actually shorten that up now that'll actually match perfectly for that footage all right guys hopefully you enjoyed the glass transition tutorial today and hopefully picked up a few tips for after effects again make sure you download the free light leak pack that's available on rocketstock.com's freebie page and if you like that they have other light leak packs that you can purchase as well again this has been charles jager thanks for watching